Hello, bronies out there in YouTube land. My name is Hawkflame, and welcome to yet another edition of Pony Analysis. It's been a while, but I'm back, and hopefully I'll get a better audio editor at some point, and I hope to continue making videos from this point forward. With that out of the way, let's get started. Pony Analysis number 8, Princess Luna. A lot has already been said about Princess Luna being such a fan favorite, so I'm not really going to go into too much detail about who she is. You all know she's a princess of the night who was a thousand years ago was jealous of her sister, turned into the Nightmare Moon, and was banished to the moon, and returned to the Summer Sun Celebration, and was ultimately returned to the by the elements of the home. You know she was a pony who had a difficult time readjusting to life in the fun sphere, and eventually she became notable as a princess of dreams, guarding her subjects to whatever emotional issues they had. So I'm going to concentrate more on why she's so popular and why I personally think she works as a character well, as opposed to just some character background. So the top three reasons why I think Luna is popular. One, her backstory. Luna is something of a tragic character. Well, as tragic as you can get for an all-powerful princess. But she's a pony who had a lot but gave into a very powerful and very relatable emotion, jealousy. It was her envy of her sister that really was her downfall. She wasn't a bad pony as much as she was a pony who let those feelings of resentment consume and take advantage of. When she becomes Nightmare Moon, that transformation is not something that she really did on purpose. As you can see here by the look of surprise on her face when it happens. Hey, does this absolve her of all blame for anything that happened as a result? Not really. But it does show a situation that we can all connect to. After all, we've all let our emotions get the best of us in doing something we regret. Number two, her redemption. This sort of goes hand in hand with her backstory. I guess you could call this like 1A. And as much as we relate to our feelings of jealousy, we also want to know that even if we do something wrong, we can be forgiven and things can get better. What Luna is looking for, particularly at the end of Frenchman's Magic Part 2 and in Luna Eclipse, is forgiveness. And not only that, people enjoy redemption stories. Just as much as we like to take someone down, we also like to see someone pick themselves back up again. With Luna, we sympathize with her situation and we want to see her pull herself back up again. Number 3. Her status is someone out of her element. This is really two things here, but they're closely related, so I'll consider them as one. First of all, she's a pony who's out of her own time and place, and doesn't really fit into modern question. She is something of an artifact from ancient times, and that's really a source of a lot of the humor around her, particularly the Royal Canterlot voice. But the humor is never at her expense. You see, yeah, it's funny because she's being so intimidating while she's really just looking for love and affection. But her inability to do so is not insulting, but it's really rather charming because she's trying to do her best to fit in and earn everyone's friendship in spite of not really understanding how. Her awkwardness in this situation is really cute and just kind of heightens the whole situation. The second part of that is, yeah, she's a pony out of her time and her element, and she feels lonely and out of place because of it. She's something of a lost soul, really, and she's really looking to find her place in the world. And because of this, she's really a lot like us. Now, I love bronies, I'm brony myself, but let's face it, many of us never really sat at the popular kids' table. We connect to Luna because she's something of an outcast, like some of us are, and is finding it difficult to fit into modern society standards. Like Luna, this guy here is not going to win a lot of popularity for us. And because of that, we relate to her. Well, those are the main reasons why I think she strikes a chord with, some, with so much of the fan base. However, I have my own personal reasons as to why the character works for me, in addition to the reasons listed above. And I'm not sure a lot of others have really thought of these, so I'm going to put it in my own separate section here. I guess you could sort of call this a personal perspective. Personal perspective, I guess. The thing I like most about Luna is that she is a constantly evolving character. We basically see different versions of the character, three different versions of her, post-Nightmare Moon. We see the 
sweet and more and more looking for forgiveness version right after being turned back to Nightmare Moon. And we see the Princess of the Night who's unsure of how to integrate back into society. And we see the all-knowing and wise Dreamwalker who guides her subjects through whatever emotional turmoil they're going through. First of all, I love seeing different sides of character. It flushes them out and makes them come alive in a more three-dimensional way. Luna isn't just one of these versions of the character, she's all of them, and that really adds to who she is and really flushes her out. Secondly, this is an evolution that makes a lot of sense. The growth is totally natural here. She was filled with bitterness and jealousy, was genuinely repentant when she realized that she had become someone so dark. And then because of that, she was now really unsure of how to be accepted back into society. And now once she's learned that and once she's really integrated herself again, she's, uh, she's become more secure of herself and now is in a position to help and guide others. I thought things went really nicely full circle when she appeared in the episode For Whom Sweetie Belle Toils. Because she saw Sweetie Belle is uh, more or less in the same situation as she was. Drawn to jealousy and to take down an older sister who quote unquote shone more brightly than her. She has gone from being someone who has, been, who has done something terrible to someone who was repentant and trying to reintegrate herself and now is secure enough to help others from following the same path she did. All done over the course of just a few episodes really, especially throughout four seasons. Anyway, that wraps up this pony analysis. I'll continue I'll continue with the princess theme, and there's only one left now, so, um, yeah, this is gonna be hard, but I'll find some way to do it. Until then, don't forget to comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on another Pony Analysis.